Good morning, Internet. Welcome to my new spacious five-acre office to talk to you about the first ever BTSD episode in Florida. And uh, for this specific one, we're going to cover what's on my shirt here, in case you can see that. Not sure. But Holiday Matsuri at the firm. <clears throat> this was a special event to me because when I decided uh, this summer to move to Florida, um, late in the summer, it actually the tickets became available for this event. And when I bought that ticket, I felt like, okay, this is it. I'm 100% committed to moving now. So that's why it kind of meant, uh, meant a lot to me. Anyway, in this video today, we're going to talk about the venue, meaning the firm, which I believe stands for Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park or something along those lines. And it's a road course, you know, it's actually a pretty big venue, big facility. Um, the layout is very flexible there. They have a bunch of like little crossovers and stuff to run different layouts. So we'll talk about the venue. We'll talk about how the event went. And then we're going to go into some driving footage and it's going to be, you know, narrated. So this shouldn't drag on too terribly long. I'll try. The firm, the actual track. So as you can see on the layout here, this is a road course that's it's not like a go-kart course it's an actual road course for grip racing and so it's not really intended for drifting the way that they had it set up at the event was that there was an a group layout and a b group layout that's what they referred to as that so uh you'll see that that narrower portion with the hairpin on the bottom that was the b group layout and then the bigger one that was the a group layout so you would start on the north end, come down the straight, uh, initiate into a right hand turn, left hand, then there was a little straight over a hill, another left hand, and then another right hand to leave that little shoebox looking area. Then there was another straightaway that would take you into, uh, on the layout, two right hand turns, but the pavement there is wide enough that you can link that into one big continuous sweeper. Uh, assuming you get the wheel speed to where you need to be. And then you need to throw like a manji to the left before that little chicane. And that little chicane uh, snuck up on a lot of people, myself included, because it's a lot slower than you think after that big turn that you just completely hauled ass through. So there was a lot of off-roading going on in that area. And that was it. That was the shutdown. So this was the, the A group layout. The B group layout, you would be gridded in the same area basically but you would go straight north then there were two right hand turns some people drifted them some didn't and then it looks like it's just a straightaway coming down to this tight hairpin but actually uh that part was extremely fun because the way that it's laid out is it just flows there is like no straights between the turns like you would initiate and then you could just keep it going and they were pretty low speed corners and if you ran a really wide line through those, you know, and you really stuck to the to the outside edge of the track, uh, it was a lot of fun because you could get some mad angles. So that flowed really well and was actually awesome. Um, unfortunately, the way that uh, they decided to run it, we barely drove that little layout. You know, it was mostly was focused on the big layout because everybody was pumped to go fast and hit that big turn. And that was fine. But uh, to me... The B layout actually flows better than the A layout. Um, in the A layout, you can see that there's like those two straightaways. And whenever you have two turns that are in the same direction connected by a straight, uh, if you want to do continuous drifting, you typically throw a manji the other way. So like say the turn is a right-hander, straightaway, not a right-hander. You huck it into the right-hand turn, carry the drift, let the car rotate the other way to stay in drift and then rotate into the next turn. Well, what happened on those straightaways was they were spaced kind of awkwardly. Like with the speed that the cars were driving, um, they were too long for a single manji uh, that you could actually throw an angle at it, you know? So like the people that, uh, I mean, I didn't watch everybody drive, right? But some of the people that were doing a single manji, what I would see with them is that they either had an extremely shallow angle like they barely drifted the manji it was more like a white arc but with like barely any any angle in the car or they would throw a single manji but then 
they realized that if they were to flick into the next turn, they would come on way short on the line. So they would like grip up and reinitiate. So that kind of felt awkward. And uh, the other option, of course, was to throw, you know, two manji. So you would manji the one way, then the other, and then a third time, and then you could be in the right direction again for the next turn. But if you did that approach, uh, the straight was a little too short for that. It would get uh, really like, there was no duration in drift. It was just like transition, transition, transition. So it's a... Uh, it's um, fun to drive, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, really hard to have a bad time drifting. That's just the nature of the beast. But that kind of uh, straight line driving where everybody approaches it different doesn't really make for uh, good lead and chase runs, you know, because it's hard to predict what the lead is going to do when you drive at a big event like this with lots of different guys, right? And then uh, when there is no duration in drift because it's literally just transition, 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 getting into that same flow you really can never like sneak up on somebody you can just stay behind their bumper and do the same flicks with them because of that i actually preferred the b layout that b layout was almost like a carbon copy of what riverside drift used at salem um, i know they changed names up there and there's the salem speedway and then there is what riverside used that go-kart course thing at the airport and i know it has a different name now i can't think of it but if you've driven that, the B layout is, I think you could overlay the two and they would match up pretty darn nice, you know? So it's very similar to that. So if you like the Riverside kart course, then B course is pretty nice. And it's uh, wider than Riverside was. So more room for error, you know, if somebody messes up, you're not going into the sticks, you know, it's all good. So that's the track. Now the event. So I only know two of the guys that put this on, you know, it was Carlos and Miles and I use the term no pretty lightly here, but I know those two dudes, the rest of them, no clue who else was involved, so I don't want to take credit away from other people that ran this. But those were the two guys I was familiar with, and this was their first event. And, uh, <laughs> you know, this wasn't like a little private day with like 10 people. It's like, no, this was a full-on 80 drivers, huge venue, vendors. Like, they had food trucks there. They had a car show, you know. So to pull that out of your... Um, had you know for a first event they they took on a lot and um you have to really give them credit for that i think the event was ran pretty well um they were a little behind schedule but people you know organizers that have run event for 10 years uh get behind schedule so for your first ever i think can't really complain about that um yeah the event was super fun there were lots of of good drivers out there they split it into a and b group and then they had a section at the little hairpin of the b layout they would allow passengers that got a passenger wristband to like just pile up there and then you would drive the A layout with them and then bring them back um, to the pickup point at B. There were quite a few people that wanted ride-alongs. So like some of the, uh, the some of the people that ran the event, they were like, hey, A-group drivers, if you have time, please go pick up ride-alongs, you know. So what I ended up doing is for the second half of the event, I didn't drive any of the heats. Uh, I literally just played drift taxi for two hours. And uh, of course, those two hours were mostly the blue car. Uh, the Mustang got a couple of those passenger laps too, but nowhere near as many. Because that track really eats tires um, on the Mustang, of course. You know, on the blue car, as per usual, I, uh, I ran on the same... Kenda scrubs that I ran for three days at OSW uh, and had in the king of OSW comp that same set of scrubs I finished off yesterday at the farm but that literally took two hours of essentially you know do a run pull back and then just the time it takes to like get a guy out of the harness in the cage car get a new passenger in explain to them how to strap in make sure they're safe you know that was the only downtime and then whoop next run so that was essentially probably an hour and a half of that to finish those tires off, finally. Good news is though that um, Tire Stacks was at this, this event also, so they were able to replenish my Kenda supply. Although, I have to say, sad moment, moment of silence. Those were my last green label Kendas. From here on out, it's yellow labels. So that's kind of sad because the green labels were so much better. Oh well. All right, and now I'll just uh, show you guys a couple of runs to give you an idea what that venue looks like. I think this first event 
uh, this holiday Matsuri event was considered a success. So I have a hunch that there's a good chance that there will be more of these. So let's cut to some driving footage to give you guys an idea of what the venue is like and, you know, hope to see a bunch of you guys out there next time. And we're off. So this is the first video to show you the A layout and I'm in the lead here coming into the shoebox. When we come around this turn, you'll see the long straightaway up the hill. So here I'm doing what flowed for me, which was three consecutive little manjis. But you can see this set me up perfectly for this turn. There was no awkwardness about this, it just flowed. Sailing out of the shoebox, now going down the really big straightaway, but this one gets wider at the end. And if you pace your manjis correctly, you can make use of all that width to really sail into this big turn. Here, uh, coming out to the concrete, but I just apexed it a little too early, not too bad. And now we're off to scrub a whole bunch of speed because this turn is way tighter than you think. Here you'll get a visual of what that looks like in the chase. This is uh, Josh in front of me and he's also doing the triple. And as you can see that uh, worked out pretty well for him. A little dirt drop there. I'm just hanging back and checking out what he's doing. And you'll notice one thing coming right up here is how much more wheel speed he can build on the straight versus me. So he's actually running a really nice line here. Just on the rumble strip. Doesn't have to make a correction like I did in the previous one. This looked really good. This really shows you from the outside of, um, what to expect on A. Now I'll show you a chase. I mean, me being chased, I suppose, uh, by an SN95. And this run actually ends up being pretty funny. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to do my wiggles, and he is syncing up with them. Staying in decent proximity. Heading out of the shoebox with a drone in hot pursuit. This should make for a cool clip. And you can see his bumper wiggle. Well, <laughs> hold on to that thought because the Mustang is hungry. Yeah, she hadn't had lunch yet. And so it's bumper eating time. So that was an expensive lap for the guy. Coming through the S, and it's a wrap. Now I'm actually chasing, and I don't have a lot of footage from this event. I only recorded a handful of runs, so I was mostly focused on chatting with passengers and stuff, but check this out. Bimmer in the lead, coming into the shoebox. And this is one of the things that I saw a lot of people do, is they focused on the turns and then just kind of neglected the straight, you know, and that's one way to do it, but that's what I mentioned earlier, is it was just tough to anticipate what the lead car was going to do, you know, so um, didn't make for the best tandems, honestly, but I, I feel like in future events, if you actually meet up with the group of people you're going to drive with first and then agree on a line, because you can see he's even throwing a manji in the big sweeper here, you know, did not see that coming. But uh, yeah, if you actually chat before the runs and agree on what to do, uh, this could be a lot of fun for Tandem for sure. Another A layout run, this time in the Mustang. And the Mustang obviously has more power, so I experimented with doing a single Manji, but it just, like I said, it was just a little too long for a single to flow. So even with the Mustang, I ended up doing all the wiggle jiggles. The difference here is that, you know, with the Mustang here, I'm snapping it into third, build a little more wheel speed. Um, the Mustang was brutal on tires. Like, I would get like four runs here and then the tires were toast, which was kind of peculiar because there was barely any smoke, you know, so it didn't look like you were chewing through tires at the rate you were, but they were going in a way in a hurry. In this run, as you can see, I had a really crappy run-up, so I didn't anticipate that being a three-car tandem. So I'm just hanging back and enjoying the view, basically. Um, what you'll see here is... Watch this, I'm gonna slow it down. Whee! That's all the angles! That was a lot. That was fun. 
that was good. That was a really good time, actually. So, when you do consecutive manjis like that, you know, you can uh, throw some mad entries. Good times. Botched entry here, never meant that, but you get the idea. Big correction because of the shitty entry. So yeah, and another dirt drop. Sheesh. Terrible is what it is. Here we got uh, Josh out front again, clipping the curb, and this is the A-pillar mounted view, so it's not the greatest, but, you know, shows you a little something. So here, he's attempting that single manji, and, I mean, it works out okay for him, but you saw what I was alluding to earlier, it's like, the angle just suffers from that, you know? And so, I hardly ever chose to go this route, it just, I just didn't enjoy it as much, you know? Yeah, he's hauling smoke there. I think that outside concrete curb is where the tires died, honestly. I feel like that was like going full scent limiter inferred into a cheese crater. Uh, here it goes off-roading a little bit. A little Baja vibe. This footage, like all the other A-pillar ones you saw, are from those passenger taxi runs I did, so you never knew what was gonna happen. Like, if somebody was in front of you or behind you, it just was pretty random. Um, not sure who this fella is, but he also goes for the single manji, and you could see there was like virtually no angle by the time he gets across the hill. So it kind of works. It's just, it doesn't work the way I like it, you know. And here he's just straight up gunning it into the next turn. And didn't really see that coming, so I'm just chilling in the way back, and then, yikes. My time to go off-roading. Saw a lot of off-roading out there. <laughs> it wasn't just me, take my word for it. And diesel, no off-roading, we're done. Another taxi run, again with Josh in the lead. We'll see how he does the Manchis this time. I have a hunch I remember this run. Good initiation, stayed steady at angle, I like that. He's trying to go a little tighter here to build more speed for the Manji. And this time it looked like he had it, but then look, he comes up short. And that's that's what I meant. It's like if you throw a manji with angle that actually feels good, by the time you're across the hill you're just nowhere near where you need to be. And he's doing the beeline approach also. Yep, yep, yep. Lots of ways to skin the cat as they say, right? So with these couple of clips I feel like I gave you a pretty good idea of uh, the different approaches for those two straightaways. And I mean not sure how you feel <laughs> more off-roading. Not sure how you feel about it, but Manji's is it for me. Last clip of A cores. So yeah, you guys almost made it through the video. Bear with me here. So I think I'm gonna do the Manji wiggles on this run. And I don't remember if Josh adapted to it or not, but hey, there he is. Menacing looking snowplow type of dealio. One headlight. Manji, Manji, Manji. Yep. He's right there, doing the wiggles. Now I'm pretty sure you'll see me shift into third. Yep, there it is. Bigger wiggles. Use all the track. Now it gets wide, so carry it wide. Da 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 da. Onto the concrete, just barely. Correction. And there's a little bit of smoke for once. Final turn, also as wide as it can get. Stay off the concrete, stay off the dirt, and we're done. Okay, as far as footage goes, that was it for A. So here we're checking out this B layout that I mentioned, and this is where it starts getting fun, right? So you'll see that you can carry it pretty wide here, throw a couple of manjis on the straight, and then when you come out of this widening section, now the actual corners start, and there's a good amount of them. And you can see that these are super fun and flowy, and you can just let the car eat, and here would be a hairpin, but uh, we didn't run that hairpin because that's where you basically park to pick up passengers, so that wouldn't have been safe to go by all these cars, but this view gives you a good idea of uh, how nice and flowy it is, you know, it's just left, right, left, right, and it feels natural, so I wish I could have tandem this, but that didn't happen this time around, maybe next time. We shall see, especially that final hairpin. 
I feel like if you were to set up there as a, a media guy on the inside clip of uh, that final hairpin, after all this, you know, chasing bumpers through the, uh, the wiggles in that last hairpin, I'm pretty sure that'd be the prime spot for doors. So yeah, I could really see a five or six car train stacking up out here and it just being a blast. Like the duration in drift for these turns is pretty good and then if you finish it off with that hairpin, man, that'd be nice. But yeah, it's a wrap. That's it. Thank you guys. See you next time.